I hit the right thing. Uh, yeah, started recording. So welcome to the early Teachers Teaching Teachers. We are uh, experimenting with doing this twice um, right in a row. My wife wonders what I'm doing, but anyway. <laughs> uh, so, but this is our, uh, so Sam, for example, mentioned to me earlier today that he couldn't make the nine o'clock, but he can make the eight o'clock. So that's the, that's sort of why we're here on the East Coast. That's sort of why we're doing this. But let's start with some introductions. Uh, Scott, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi. Uh, name is Scott Christensen. I'm an education specialist in Utah um, for one of our larger districts, Canyon School District. Um, I focus on secondary ELA, um, but I'm also a member of our district um, DTL, which is the digital teaching and learning team. Um, well, I'm not, whatever, I support the DTL team. Um, and uh, and yeah, I've just been been able to come to a handful of these and I've really enjoyed and learned a ton. So. Cool, cool. Thank you. Um, Sam, why don't you introduce yourself? I'm a student of Jill's who works with Pa and um, Basically, uh, I've just been like experimenting with now comment in different types of AI and seeing like with my friend, Nate, seeing like what we can do with it. Cool. Um, Kristen, am I saying your name correctly? Yes. Um, Kirsten. Kirsten, sorry. I, um, I thought I had it wrong. Yeah, hi. Um, <laughs> hi. Um, I'm um, an adjunct. Um, English instructor at a couple of local universities. I teach freshman composition. I just retired from um, full-time uh, teaching in the high school level. Where are you located? Um, in Virginia Beach, Virginia. Cool. Welcome. Um, Kirsten, I think you have a um, an account on Now Comment. Do you? If I, I don't know. <laughs> so jump out to nowcomment.com, not, not jump out. Um, on a different tab, go to nowcomment.com and, and try to log in. And because we want this to be interactive, actually hands on kind of experience. I don't oh, know if you okay. are prepared for that. But okay, probably not. But uh, okay. Okay. okay, it's fine. So we'll, go out of this one and try to come back no, in. No, stay where you are. Okay. Go to a new tab. Okay. And on the new tab, try that. Okay. But we'll, we'll follow up with that. And Bob Montgomery, you just went right on top of Zoe, which is fine. Welcome, welcome. Just move off a little bit. Thank you, thank you. It's uh, totally appropriate for you to give introductions quickly. Hi, folks. I'm Bob Montgomery. I work at West Ed and curious about AI to support adult professional learning. And we have a young adult here <laughs> as well. So Sam, I, I'll quickly introduce you to Sam, which is, who is an eighth grader. And Scott, you've met before, and Kristen, and um, uh, we want to, so let me, um, I had promised in the uh, introduction to this event to show you a few things, and then we can, um, and then I'd love for you to try some of it out. So on a different tab, if you can get logged into now comment, that would be good. Um, and then I'll share a screen. Um, yeah, let's. So let me just uh, jump there, and then so which will give us more time for later. I want to share my screen. Oh, well, I'm going to go off camera. Yeah. And mostly be listening tonight, so okay, giving you the heads up. Okay. So. What am I sharing? I'm, I'm sharing the crazy thing here, right? And that doesn't come on. Why doesn't that work? That used to work. It doesn't anymore. Okay, hold on. I'm going to cha change my presentation here. Um, present. Yeah, let's try that. Thank you for your patience here, folks. Do you now see GPT Thinking Partners? Yes. OK. Um, 
and we may include this person as well. Hi there. Introduce yourself as you're, we're just getting started. Hi everyone, I'm Jesse Early. Welcome. Welcome. So, so oh, we do uh, have we a do bit have of a an echo. <laughs> All right. People are gathering. It's okay. Um, hi, David. Hi, Paul. We're kind of getting started here. Um, Sam, let's put you on the hot seat. What's the latest? Um, Sam is an eighth grader in New Jersey. What's the latest uh, thinking partner you've been messing with? Yes. So uh, last time we were like doing like trying to like make the AIs on that comment go back and forth with you and so like kind of like experimenting with it now because like uh -huh. we're gonna try like doing more me and my friend Nate so we tried making like a conversational partner like where you can have a full conversation with something and at the end it'll ask you like um what what other topic do you want to talk about and I'll give you like choices and you can say I want to talk about like, I don't know, like math, English or something else. And yeah. Okay. What did you call it? We just called it conversational AI. <laughs> um, why didn't I not see it yet? Oh, it's not published yet. I just have oh, it I see. on the. So, okay. So here's what I here's let me let me jump to this then um, and maybe you'll get that up so you can share it here in a second perhaps. Um, I'm going to go to the conversational. So I'm trying to show a quick example, conversational inquiry co coach. So last week, um, just Sidronsky explained that she was doing roots and branches with um, uh, journal entries, having trying to kind of provoke, push, encourage her eighth graders to think um, beyond the texts that they're reading to find inquiry topics that they want to do. So we can look at this prompt here in a second, but what we've been experimenting with is could we create prompts that do this? And, and I'll say this kind of quickly, just trying to show some examples here. Um, and if I can open this up there, that'll be better. So we do give it a brief persona, but then we quickly say condense each of your responses to 150 words, um, avoid repeating anything, all of this. Um, and we say, this is an important line here too. Prepare a complete answer, right? So it's sort of train. Uh, and then condense all of that into a summary that goes into the 150 words. Here's, and then there's, here's what to do. We want it to read the journal entries, come up with three inquiry questions. But then remember, keep your word, keep your output to under 50 words. And then give me three possible things that I might think about going to next. That's sort of what we've learned to kind of encourage a dialogue happening in, in this now comment space. Um, that was very brief. And anybody want to ask questions about that? Thoughts? Just kind of showing an example. All right, please interrupt me. <laughs> as we go. Now, what's new this week? It's new uh, two days ago. Um, our tech staff, Jeremy, <laughs> got this done. Um, he basically, uh, the same um, sliders that you have on OpenAI's playground, we now have here. So you can change the, the max response length as, as you go, something to play with. You can change the temperature. Sam, what do you understand temperature to be? 
you're here. I'm gonna pick on you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, temperature is like um, it's like the spiciness. So like, if it's like um, like you tell it a prompt, it'll be like if you set it to a super low setting, it'll be kind of like a bit boring and like exactly what you say. But if you set it to like the max, it it can be like really wild, and sometimes it just doesn't even respond to like what you're even trying to ask or doesn't even follow the prompt because like the temperature is like i i'd say it's like the spiciness you know like how something has heat in it so um the more like hot it is the more wild and like crazy that um the ai is on its own and it's like super unpredictable and sometimes it just like goes off the rails wow cool cool have you experimented with it much or? Yeah, we've, um, me and Nate just tried it a bit. And sometimes when the temperature is at the top, it doesn't actually respond to our um, passage. And one time when we tried using it, it started ranting about elephants. <laughs> okay. Well, did you ask it about elephants? No, I'm teasing you. <laughs> Um, yeah. Okay. So, um, we could we could end there. I just want to do uh, not. But top P is another thing that creates um, different, boring to exciting. Let's just use that language. This um, technically, what it does is it limits the the number of guesses it it looks at, right? So when when the database gets all the text, it goes in and says, okay, here's what I think the answer would be. It considers, instead of considering 15 guesses, it considers the top three guesses if it's if it's really low, right? So if you wanted to consider all the possible guesses, you put it up high. So that's what that's about. Frequency penalty has to do with whether, whether it repeats words that were used before or not. Kind of complicated because it, it's using all of the text that you put in. So, and then presence penalty. All of these should be, and I'm saying this to Sam Nate, but anybody else who wants to go play with this now, um, you kind of want to play with them one at a time because you won't know what's happening if you don't. Fair enough. Any questions about why we would even have these? Or just to note that they're hidden under advanced settings. We don't want to scare people when they first come in, we right? But um, I do think they it, it has some use. Any thoughts about why we would have these and what use you can imagine they might have? <laughs> or questions or thoughts? Yeah. Paul, you had said that you, you were putting the functions on um, AI play the AI play the um, the playground and yes. getting that into the just putting those those that that functionality in the UI um, into now comment and that's what we're looking at now is that right? That's correct. Got it. And um, I mean, to your point, to to actually play with those sliders means that you you're, you're sort of you're driving the dashboard more than just waiting for responses. Um, and um, Sam, your description of you know what happens. I mean, you've already you're already you're already an expert at what can happen with with the range values, right? Um, it's interesting to think of the amount of understanding you bring to those changes. But and your point's really well taken, Paul. That if you start to move too many sliders around, you're not going to know what's going on. But it does presume a certain amount of thinking and understanding as you move through those things. If you make the choices to modify them, and that's really a nice scaffold. That's great. So this is new, and so no one's no one's messed around with this yet in a now comment setting. This is just a feature update. Yeah? Right. So you uh, you will be the group that does that. I hope in in ten minutes. Right. Okay. Um, Sam, did you want to say any more about it? Well, I just think that's like really useful, like the sliders, because of instead of having to tell it like um keep the mass response length at 150 and that stuff 
you can just easily like put it as like a slider for the maximum characters and like how much how wild you want it to be because you can't tell something like i want you to be 1.2 percent wild or it's kind of tough to do that so i think that um like the uh sliders are really efficient yeah and absolutely ba ba figuring out not balancing figuring out what um what the prompt's going to do and what the sliders are going to do is an interesting process. I'll warn you that if the if you limit it to if you don't say things like condense the text to this number of in your prompt, this number of words, um, it will get the entire answer if you give it very few character or very few um, tokens, right? Let's say 150. It'll try to give the whole answer and just cut it off in the middle of the sentence. So that's the kind of thing where you want to kind of figure it out and see how it works. Um, okay. I I want to show one more example, if I can. But uh, so I'm bringing up. So one of uh, David turned me on to Ronald Bagato. I'm not, I hope I'm saying his name correctly. He's our colleague of <laughs> Jessica Early's. And um, here's an article that, and I'm going to show you what one of the things I did with it. All right. So in his article, he actually creates GPTs. Um, and he, one of, one of his research areas is possibility thinking. Um, right. So this is in the room you're in, you can click on it, um, on your own another time or, or now, um, one of the, one of the chatbots he creates in the open AI playground, right. Is the as if bot. And the as if bot generates actionable possibilities through as if analogies that deviate from something known, actual, or explore something meaningful. Really fascinating to take a, and I played with this a little bit, take a teacher's lesson plan and say, hey, this is what I'm trying to work on. Give me an as if response to that, right? So I took his description here, which is here on the right side. And, and I have to click around here and try to, anybody, well, sorry, I should explain further. He has one, two, three, four, uh, five boxes created and with the descriptions here, right? So I thought, could we create thinking partners? Could we have an as if thinking partner, right? On now comment. All right. As I'm clicking around here, questions, thoughts, ideas? <laughs> okay, wrong text. All right. Again, I there is a table to your top right if you want to go look as, as I'm doing this. What I'm trying to do is give you an example. So here's the as if coach. Um, you can use it with any text I've found. Um, so here's my title. Um, I'm going to close something here. Okay. Trying to open this box. Okay, so I tell it to be a wise professor who has studied possibility thinking, right? Give us examples of possibility thinking. Do your do the whole answer. This you've seen this before now. <laughs> um, respond in less than 150 words with each response, right? Keep going, and then tell me the next three things you want me to go to. But here's this is actually taken right from. Um, Professor Goto, Gato, Gato, um, um, his work, 
right? So generate inactionable possibilities for addressing problems. So this is what the prompt looks like. I did not mess around at all with the advanced settings. So they are set kind of to the default, just to know that. Um, and then if I were better at this, I would be able to show you an as if right away. But I'm going to try to find one quickly. Um, Okay. It, 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 are you following me? Do you see a branch, trees and branches? I can't see you, so give me a, let me know if it, it looks right, right? Yes, okay. So, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so this is when Jill and I were trying to work out what, you know, what we wanted to do with the trees and branches. Um, I just said, this is this is Jill's email to me. She said, I'm definitely going to do a whole think tank about branches and trees and so forth. And then, so I popped in her, I took her message and I said, okay, let's use the as if coach. And it says, to spark your eighth graders' imaginations, let's use possibility thinking, right? It's as if each, every student were an, an explorer to visit a galaxy. It's as if, right, the classroom were a time machine. That one's fascinating, by the way. Or it's if, as if the idea is a sea garden. You can kind of see what this possibility thinking is trying to do with the teacher's work here, right? Um, and then it says here at the end, which of these do you want to go on with, right? And, and think about further. I then moved off of it and moved to other thinking partners. But yeah, okay. I'm hoping <laughs> that that is a brief introduction to what we've been messing around with here, um, where we get the ideas, how we think about things, how we test them, kind of thing. Um, what more information could I give you for you? Oh, and or we could go to Sam's, if you could share a screen, Sam, do you want to do that? Okay, I saw the head nod. But I, I do want to give you time to go play in a second as well. Sam, are you trying? Oh, perfect. OK, now you need to unmute so we can hear you. Wait, am I unmuted? You're unmuted. We're good. We can see your screen and we can hear you. All right. Well, I didn't really do much here because, like, I'm still trying to see um, what's going on with this. Um, if you guys want to see my other ones or this sure, one. Show us, show us another one. Wait, hold up. Let me go to the. By the way, I, I got an email from Nate saying that oh. he, couldn't make, he couldn't make the early meeting. And it was an email that a now comment bot had created. <laughs> Thanks. Um, this is the email. Yeah, I, that's the okay. one he used to. Mm -hmm. Pretty simple, actually. So, read it to us. Um. Know. So he says to always start the response with "dear" and then like in brackets the name, so you can like personalize it. Um, and then he said, like, go down two lines and then draft a kind email for a student that might send it to a teacher or a friend. Um, we might try, like, um, making it so, like, it's not just, like, a student or friend and more people. But uh, that's really up to Nate. And um, he says that we should, um, the bot should refer back to the prompt to see how the tone should be, which is like good i mean right it, so you could say write an angry email or you could say write a funny email right yeah yeah like you give it the tone based on mm -hmm. what you're asking for and then 
he also says remember to be kind in the email and make sure that if you are asking for something ask kindly um we also had problems with like asking it to be kind and like because nate doesn't want it to be too kind and then when nate put in like remember to be kind but like not too kind it started to be angry so we learned not to tell it to not be kind and i know uh paul told us about that and um he also says to keep an appropriate tone based on the person specified that you were writing to email to which is actually like really useful because if you're writing to like a teacher and you say like yo what's up please get my grade up i don't know how happy the teacher's gonna be about that but if you're talking to a friend and you're like that it's it's okay so um that last part is like really really important because we um nate had like an experiment where we said like write an email to a friend telling him like we want to go play like basketball later and it had like it it was super super nice like it was like good evening madam do you want to like go play uh a game of basketball later and it was just like too formal so the appropriate tone is i uh, paul told us to add that and it's really helped with the email ai any feedback to sam about what you're saying here <laughs> or to all of us about what sam's doing sam and nate are doing <laughs> Go ahead, David. You unmuted. <laughs> yeah, right. well, Sam. It's just—it's really wonderful to see how you guys are driving this thing. I mean, it's like a dashboard, and you and Nate—I assume Nate is your friend in class. Is that right? Yeah. And so you guys are fashioning this uh, this auto-generated email bot. It's really great. I mean, the, the levels of tone and your decisions about it are really interesting to follow. It's, it's very—it's really fun to see you driving this thing like that. Very inspiring. You guys made this a, 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 a email creation bot because what was your thought? That would just be a fun thing to try? Mm -hmm. Or were you thinking, oh, I can use it to do letters to my teacher? Or did you guys have a specific goal in mind besides the general idea of like writing an email because it seemed like a thing to do? Well, it's kind of a funny story. Like yeah. this lady, I was supposed to like walk her dog and mm -hmm. then <laughs> she got the times mixed up. Yeah. So I was kind of mad about that. Sure. And since I didn't, my tone in that email was like really mad. Oh, really? I, yeah, I didn't, I didn't like, and I remember in like sixth grade, I accidentally sent a really angry email to my sixth grade teacher. Oh, really? So I, I had to think before I did it. And then language arts, I was still a bit mad about it. So I, I told Nate that like, maybe we should create an email AI. Like, it, I, it was like a joke at that point. Cause like I was talking to him like, oh, I'm I'm kind of mad about this, and then he um we created this one. I think it was like, yeah, it was more of his idea of like which one it should be. I was like, um, talking about the idea. He really started it, and then yeah. um, I think that it's like good because when it gives you like the kind email, it helps you reflect on like your emotion and like I can be mad in the moment but like a day after I realized that it was a bad decision so sure. the kind AI sets like a basis and like makes you like you don't have to put the exact AI I know um Nate was responding to the uh Miss Dedronsky about like whether we can make the meeting tonight and he actually used the AI to type nice. the email nice. which is really cool because that's yeah. the first time we used it real and you can go like just exactly from that or like you can use the basis of that and like personalize it a bit more since like it's you don't it's like a basis because it's not like full like the ai doesn't know the person you're speaking to but like it can give you like if you tell them that it's like a teacher or like a person you want to walk a dog it can give you like a, a small basis but since you don't have the personal information you just make it more personalized after. That's great. It's really fun to think, well, I don't know if it, was, it certainly wasn't fun to have to have a lady blow the time and you 
write a really ticked off email, but the fact that you constructed this with your friend Nate based on that sort of understand that experience is great. Thanks for sharing that. <laughs> cool, cool. Um, so whether or not I'm correct to do this, I've been pushing Sam and Nate to say to to totally value the creation of text, which is what you've created, but also but also to be thinking about creating um, GPTs that might do the same thing with your writing. Do, did you hear me ask that? And do you want? Yeah, to I know that. Like, we could, because like, we want to. Like, we're kind of still trying to get used to it, because mm -hmm. it's called GPT Thinking Partners, and we're gonna try making it, or we might try making it to get you to like think about what you're gonna send. And I think it already kind of does that, but we're gonna try since it is thinking partners and currently it's just giving back just like an email. We just want to get used to it first and then we'll try more like about like conversation. But currently I'm um, me and Nate aren't like fully sure about how to work the conversation thing. A lot of us aren't. Um, we're figuring it out together. And I'm learning a lot from you guys, and we're all learning from you too. So it's great. Um, do you, uh, um, uh, Scott or Jess, anybody want to jump in with any questions or thoughts? Or Kirsten or Bob, you're in the background, but. Or, okay. Well, yeah, well I love well, seeing, I love seeing that in that you're already experimenting. Um, with concepts of audience and purpose, which is pretty amazing. Yeah, I think we were on a call with Paul on that. And uh, I think I said that, I, I know we were talking about like the concept of the email AI and I was like, chat GPT can do that by itself. So this is kind of useless, but the thing chat GPT lacks is that it's not really good I like doing like things that you tell it like it's not good at taking in all this information and like using it to power its next response it's more just like hey like write me an essay on like the history of this and like answer my question because it's not yet like now comments really good at it because it can give the ai it's easier to give the ai a personality and like tell it to do things so when i told nate like isn't the email thing kind of purposeless he said that or paul said that um that the ai can do what you what type of email you want it to send like a kind email chat gpt could send an angry email happy it's modest but you need to tell it and it's not really that good at um taking that information yet Yeah, again, we're all learning this together. So thank you for exploring it. Um, I what Sam, if you could, or actually, why don't you stay sharing and show people how to how to start a new one. And if you are all on a now comment uh, page, you can follow along with what he's doing. So you go to GPT Thinking Partners. And there's lots of verbiage there and dip it down toward the bottom. There are, there's the list of ones that have been created. Now you can either start by duplicating something that you want to mess with and people can do that, or you can start new, right? What do you want to demonstrate? Yeah. Okay. So you start a new thinking partner, you give it a title, give it a prompt. Sam, I, I love hearing you say it better than me. What are the sort of three things you want to do in a prompt? Uh, so the first thing I think is like giving it a persona. Mm -hmm. um, that's the first thing, like for my youth voices one and for my other one, I told it to act like a kind teacher and like be nice in the emails. Mm -hmm. um, I think the second one might be like giving it a purpose. That's a good way to say it. Yep. Yeah. Like telling it to do something like 
um, like giving it the purpose to like write an email. And I'm actually not sure of what the third thing is. That's okay. It's um, defining the output. Like what, what do you want the output to look like? Right? The, mm -hmm. the result you get back. Do you want it to be really long, short, that kind of thing? Or do you want it to be a poem? Right? Th that's sort <laughs> of the extreme example. But th that's some of the definition you can do. So I would love for everybody here, if, if you need more help, um, let me know. But um, good, keep going down. For, so that's what you do in the prompt. Everyone do that. And then come back and talk to us. Talk to us. And then if you hit the advanced settings, if you want to mess with those after you create something, please do that. <laughs> and could we do a quick go around and say, how does this feel? Is it OK to throw you out there and try it? <laughs> or do you need more assistance? Or do we do one together? I just don't know how to get into it. OK. OK. You're on You're now, on comment. now comment. Yeah. And, and Sam, scroll to the top again. There is a button. There is a tab for GPT Thinking Partners. Click that. Yep. Just to know, the short description doesn't, it, it shows up um, when you choose it, but it doesn't go to the doesn't go to AI, but it's nice to have a good description there eventually. You have to have something there. And Sam, why don't you go ahead and make one now that and people can watch you do that? <laughs> Is that okay? Oh my gosh, Paul, I Paul, I, I recommend I recommended one of these to um, the director of our department. She was doing a pitch to the school board and she was really nervous about it. And I said, you need to find a GPT that has uh, the persona of that school board member and see what happens and test it out on them first. <laughs> so, and there's one here. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, yeah, that's one Chris Sloan created actually. Yeah, maybe it was the same school board member. But yeah, so yeah. So um, what persona should I do? I don't know. What? Or I could do a school board member if that's like. Now do something you're interested in. Uh. You know when like you're trying to think of the thing you always think about and like your head goes blank. That's what happened. That's what's happening to me right now. Oh, uh, <laughs> We're I'll, I'll do like spot a nice tonight. teacher. Huh? Okay. I'll do like a teacher. Okay. Exactly right, Sam. You go, man. And then, like, what should the like purpose be? Like, I'll like give feedback on students' quizzes or something. Okay. Yeah. What do you mean by quizzes? What's a quiz? Like, or give feedback on like students, uh, like essays or um, like essays, like narratives or really any like writing thing. Okay. And I hope if you're able to mess with this yourself, everyone else. Jess, did you get in? OK. So I'm going to keep coaching or thinking with Sam a little bit. Sam, what's a nice teacher? Oh, like a nice, thoughtful. Actually, I need to. And then, like, who's nice, thoughtful English teacher? <laughs> and then, oh. 
and then if I go down, oh, like, and then I can say, like, give it, give the feed back in, like, a poem form, if that's, like, in the form. What kind of poem? A haiku poem. And then, uh, and then I think you might need to create a group to like work the AI. So I just, um, I already have. Well, like, you're, you're, you have your group, right? Mm -hmm. So you can just put it in your group. Does it, does it show up? Yeah, okay. And then, like, I'll just name it, like, um. How about? Hold on. I, I think we need, in the name, I want, I would want something about haiku. Could it be a haiku teacher? Or something like that. Yeah. Um. And then if I share it with the CMG. You, you got to give it a description. And this is much better than my trying to describe how to do it. So I hope people are able to follow. This is great. I'm not following along, are you, are you, Sam. You're teaching me. Cool. Cool. Anybody stuck Anybody? on anything? Okay. And then I, I'm not gonna mess with the advanced setting right now. Uh, let's let's play with them a little bit. Uh, what do you want the temperature or? Well, what do you think? Well, I'll, I'll it's make a high, it. It's a high point, point three. So it's not too crazy, but it's not like the super boring. And then. Okay. Let's just do one at a time. Yeah. Let's so just, we just start the with the temperature for now. And then. Yeah. All right. And then I have to give it a category. And then... These, um, what category did you give it? Writing mentor. Perfect. And then I created it for yeah. And if I go into the one I, I put the like um AI into, like I said, uh, make this one available to like the Sam's GPT group. When I go here, mm -hmm. you know, like I can start a new discussion. Yeah, and I, this is your journal here, right? Uh-huh. If I like start a new conversation. But, 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 wait, 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 wait. Um, let's have it respond to your journal. So this is your reading journal that you've put here, your book thought journal. Oh, it's just one. It's not your whole journal. It's just one comment from it. Mm -hmm. right? uh, I'll just like uh, add. Um, okay. Like Go for it. Or actually, but you need a, you need a piece of writing for it to respond to. That's your writing. Hold up. I'll go to my book thought journals and get one of those. Okay. So while you're doing that, thoughts, questions, issues, other from other people. Once you add the writing, like I added writing, but then how do you get it to respond? I'll watch. So then, you, yeah. Um, you need a piece of writing. Did you do a writing one also? Yeah. Okay. So you need you need to upload a piece of writing, which Sam is doing right now on his on his discuss, GPT discussions page, but it wouldn't have to be there. So, do you have a piece of writing you could upload? <laughs> yeah. Um, 
And so if, if you see the upload there, I'm saying this to Jess. There's an upload, There's an button. upload button. Hit the upload. Hit the upload. And then yeah. And then copy and paste, copy and paste into, into oh, okay. text, all right, text now. all right now. Okay, perfect. Scott, how are you Scott, doing? Scott, how are you doing? <laughs> yeah, okay. If you're doing fine, go for it. But I just doing good. Yeah, I'm just I'm I'm uh, I'm doing one on how to create a professional learning. So we'll see what happens. Okay. So just once you get it up, then you then you um, and you can just click through all of the all of the pages that say do you want to all the options and just say go go go. It'll just create a private document for you. Um, so the group that you would set up would be, say, the your group of students? Person, um, say that again. I, I said, yeah. so the group that you would have would be, say, a group of students? There are lots of different kinds of groups you can set up. Um, Sam and, and his the other students in Ms. Stodronsky's class set up just last week these um, discussion groups of their own so that they can go and test stuff, right? Um, and right on the top of now comment is a, a thing that says, you know, get your own, if you follow that, get your own chat partner. If you click that and follow that, you, you can set up a group that way. But it doesn't matter. You just, you can put up a document any way you'd like to on now comment, and then you can start using a thinking partner. Okay, so the idea would be that the students would, um, so the I guess the teacher, somebody would create the prompt, and then the students would put, say, a piece of writing um, into this particular uh, prompt in order to get some type of response or processing. Yes, and I appreciate your your asking really important sort of okay. questions yeah, that we skipped over at the beginning. I apologize okay. that we jumped so fast into some of this, but um, there there are at this point there are three, and I don't mean to confuse, but there are three possible ways that thinking partners can respond. One is to um, a short story or a, an article that um, you know that that has been put up either by the students themselves or by a teacher, right? Okay. And, then, okay. and then there's a variety of reading thinking partners that respond to that. Fair enough. Another way, okay. is, to, another way is for students to put up their own writing, uh -huh. and, which is what Sam's doing. And a third way that we've just started experimenting with is this chat place where it just responds to whatever last thing you put up in that it's like a discussion board, really, without any text. And I know okay. I was explaining the basics to you and I got complicated. I apologize. Um, do you have any more basic questions? Yeah, yeah. so students yeah. could theoretically take it upon themselves, like say they had a draft of an essay and they could create their own group and create their own prompt to have this thinking partner because they need to revise it or add voice or what have you. So they, they can do that of their own volition. Yeah, Sam, what do you want to say? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I just want to like, like Thank go you. off of that and like say that like the AIs are really useful because the um whatever AI you want to create can be helpful to whatever situation is for you. Like I know um for like the teacher's board thing, uh, she wanted like something to simulate that. She can create that and use it for her own good. Like I, um, like a student can create his own like English mentor for his own good without having to like get like a tutor or English tutor. And it's just like it's up to you on what you want to make the AI. Oh, okay, thank you. And Sam, and and Kirsten, anybody, one of the one of the things that I think needs to be be researched is how valuable is it to have like the amazing perfect we've we've worked on this thinking partner for three months and it's a great thinking partner give that to students 
prompts to, to use to think about their writing and or make their own, right? And then, so I don't know yet which is better <laughs> because, yeah. so, yeah. It's, well, it's it certainly builds question. agency if they have to um, create their own versus a teacher creating the prompt and, okay, you go in and do whatever. But if they have to, because that's part of their writing process, they would have to um, uh, really, you know, take a deep dive into their own writing to discern what I would need this thinking partner to help me do, which is valuable, way more valuable yeah, than but the teacher but, guiding. But, it, it, you know. but it's, a, yeah, just to push back on that though, it's another level of learning and skill and time that, you know, and they may not come up with the perfect thinking partner. I don't know. Yeah, I, it's, yeah. Sam, do you want to finish what you were doing here? Do you, uh, did you hit continue? Yeah. Yeah. So what you, you put in your, your thought journal? Yeah. And you asked the haiku teacher to respond to it. All right, hit, hit, con hit continue and let's see what happens. Yeah, so it was about like um, being like small and like the MVA and how like height affects like um, and like the standard of this and is not what your writing was about to others. Uh -huh. So uh, the haiku thing it actually did work really well. So um, yeah. it's just like growth um, from within, short and height, tall and spirit, maximize your gift. It gives like a really short response because I told it to be a haiku and it it kind of like does summarize what I was talking about in the whole um, like paragraph in like a whole haiku. And it's talking about how like you don't really need the physical, but um, you can have be tall and like spirit and other things and that you got to maximize whatever you get. So yeah, hit reply, and when you do that, it's going to tell you you can't have that much in the uh, question. But but it's okay. Just just hit reply again now. Yeah, and so you have that much of it. So here's where here's where the the reality of humans using this and students using this. So Mr. Dronsky and I are creating these thinking partners that give you a list of three questions, possible inquiry ideas, and right? I mean, they're really interesting things you get back, but I don't know if that's more helpful than getting a haiku back, right? <laughs> so, yeah. But, but what's nice is you can do both, right? <laughs> you can kind of, and then say, yeah, what do you think, right? Yeah. Um, I'm looking at the time, um, thinking I want to give some people thought, questions, ideas here. Oh, oh, and also report back on what you made or did or did you get anything? Do you want to share a screen? Scott, um, I don't want to share this. I don't want to share the screen, but I do want to just say what just happened. This is pretty cool. Um, I did a PD. I don't know, about a month and a half ago, and it totally tanked. I went like just too strong with something I thought everyone was going to love, and I guess I went too fast. <laughs> um, and so I put in basically the the most reluctant person I know that I work with as as my um, my GPT, and then I put in my outline for that PD that I had written before I made it. Wow. And the yeah. feedback it gave me was almost identical to the feedback I got from the teachers after the PD, because I haven't given me feedback through the Google form. So that was that was really useful. I could see that as a someone who creates PDs for teachers. Oh, you could have done be that like, before, before the PD. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I probably will from now on. <laughs> so that was really cool. Interesting. Jess, did you get anywhere or what do you or where did you get to and can we help when No, no. Did you have a, des a description? That might be why you left. 
Oh, okay. What did you call it? It may be there. Okay. <laughs> I like that. No, no, it's cool. Christina Cantrell had just come from yoga, and we made a yoga coach that that analyzes your writing with Iander with yoga, yoga, yoga principles. principles. Nice. It actually, it works, actually works really nicely. Really nicely. <laughs> yeah, I wanted yeah. my coach yeah. to respond to writing in soccer using strategies and soccer language and writing play, like soccer plays. Cool. But I have no idea where it went. Okay. Okay. Sorry you lost Sorry it. you lost but, it. That's okay. Uh, it may be, Live and it learn. May be. <laughs> okay. uh, I'm going to close this hour. Um, anybody who wants to hang around, feel free. Um, Sam, thank you so much for being the spotlight here. Really, really appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you, Sam. Uh, thank, you, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Sam. Sam, you told you last week. You thank said you, that uh, that you um, that this gets in your head, and you want to do it in math class, and you want to do it in this class. <laughs> Is that still true? Yeah. Yeah, like after language arts, like there's like a rush of like AI. Uh, that like I keep on wanting to do it, so uh, yeah, it just like it's it's kind of weird though, cause like at one moment I'll just like start creating a new one. It's just me and Nate just want to keep on creating AIs and just. So keep do you think you and Nate are unusual, or do you think the other kids your in your class are similar? Well, I'm pretty sure a lot of the other kids are also creating AIs, but I'm not sure like. Maybe it's just me, but like maybe it's like they they have the same thing. I, I'm not sure, but yeah, maybe. No, I, it's it, you, you didn't have to have an answer to that. I'm, I'm oh. just curious, but yeah, no, I I need to identify when I'm asking what kind of questions there are. Kirsten, um, kind of uh dropped you into the deep end here. Are you okay or any anything? Well, you I'm to help <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll, I'll have to think about it and, um, I'll probably maybe message you some questions. I would like, I would appreciate though, if you could just, I know there were three, um, things that you had mentioned specifically when Sam was creating his prompt, if you could just drop those maybe somewhere <laughs> under the meeting. I know there were three different specific conditions, um, none of sure. which I wrote down. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it's definitely interesting and something I could try with, um, have my college students try. Um, I know they have the writing center, they have other resources available, but um, it's definitely something I would like to to play with. Um, mm -hmm. Yes. Cool. Yeah, Thank let's you. get you playing and then you, you'll know how to have them play. Yeah. Yes. Cool, cool. Thank you so much. Um, and we'll Thank talk you. to you all soon. Unless Thank you're staying you. around. I'm going to stop the video.